Uh, so I have stopped and gotten out to photograph some of the flowers here. And I had been noticing as I drive that there was tons of colts foot in here. So I have my colander. I'm gonna pick some colts foot and then it will just dry sitting in here as I drive uh, due to airflow and when it gets warm in my van. So yeah, <laughs> and I got Frank out so he can enjoy the tundra. It is, it's just, <laughs> it's huge. It is mind blowing. <laughs> How big and vast this place is and yeah there's so much beauty in the detail hi buddy hi are you enjoying how soft it is yeah buddy it's not as bad as it has been, eh, with the bugs? Yeah. Thanks, Frank. Thanks for guarding our colt's foot. You're such a good foraging assistant. All right, so I have a nice uh, little stash here of colt's foot to dry. Uh, and Frank has been just in, in lounging, loving it. Uh, there's a lot of mosquitoes around. I hear them, but they're not super bitey. They're not kind of all over Frank. So yeah, I guess, I don't know. Anyway, I'm happy about it. I'm, I'm very happy about it. So I also found I was out there, a candy bar wrapper that does not belong. So I picked it up and um, yeah, we're gonna continue. We're really dilly-dallying, we're taking our time. I am in no rush to get to the Arctic Ocean. I know it will happen. And I just wanna have the fullest experience on the way there. I just spotted a yellow flower. Let's go check it out. It's time to load up. Let's go, buddy. There you go. Something I was really looking forward to seeing when I got to the Arctic was pingos, which are these mounds of earth I'm flying towards. They are a feature that's unique to the Arctic environment that form as a result of permafrost dynamics with surface water. And this area around the Tuk 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 Peninsula has one of the most concentrated regions of these landforms, uh, either in Canada or the world. So these were the first ones that I saw along my drive. I was very excited. So I flew over to check them out and it was neat to see them in different stages of formation. It is a little after 2 a.m. and I have made it to the Arctic Ocean. You can't really see it though because it is very foggy and it is very, very cold. It is only 
a couple degrees above freezing and it's windy but there's no mosquitoes so I'm very happy there are tons of travelers camping here and um, yeah tomorrow's gonna be a big day but it's just uh, it's a little surreal it doesn't it doesn't feel real yet and it's been really really a long drive to get here I've looked forward to this for many years but started this trip in southern Arizona so it has been a long and wonderful few months and this is as far north as you can possibly drive in Canada Canada's only road to the Arctic Ocean I'm gonna get Frank out for a photo and just uh, yeah, let the feelings start to process, I guess, and come to the surface, and yeah. Hey, what do you think, bud? What do you think? <laughs> Hi. Thanks, thanks for coming with me to the Arctic, Frank. You've been a great, great road trip companion. All right, so it is 5 a.m. and I'm here in Tuk 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 at the end of the road, at the very end, as far as I can walk without getting wet, of the spit at the end of the road, the farthest north you can drive in Canada, which I've probably told you many, many times, but I got here at 2 a.m. and there was a man about gathering wood and I've just spent the past three hours uh, hanging out by his campfire with him just chatting he's been here for 11 days so i heard a bunch of stories and then i've just come out for a walk here uh, before going to bed well having dinner and then going to bed i'm hungry and it has been quite the day so i get some sleep before all the festivities today is not only the summer solstice but it is also Indigenous Peoples Day and starting in eight hours, there will be a whole series of events that will go on for hours. I'm really looking forward to it. It's gonna be a really special, really, really special day. I've come at the perfect time to experience the local culture. And uh, yeah, it's a, the fog is just starting to lift off the ocean so yeah it's uh, really really grateful to be here and yeah I don't know how long I'll stay but I'm not in a big rush to leave it was a long long drive to get here and I want to savor the experience as much as I can up here it's already been more than a month since the sun has set and it won't set again until 2 20 in the morning on july 26th so more than a month until the sun will set so i am uh, in the middle of a two month long day here on the arctic ocean it's been a really really long long journey to get here and um so much has happened and so many things have gone awry and holdups and this and that and, and yet I still arrived uh, exactly when I intended to uh, pretty much to within the hour so yeah, it's beautiful <laughs> it was about 8 a.m. <laughs> by the time I fell asleep it is now a little after 11 Been just an amazing day. And there was a huge community event here, 
and we were welcomed as visitors and it was beautiful. It was so amazing to see what felt like everyone from the hamlet here. So there was food and then there was a series of indigenous games and um, just cultural practices that was really, really amazing to observe. But it was like also amazing just to observe the people that live here and just everyone outside happy, having a good time and just kids running around everywhere and biking everywhere and yeah, so it was it was a day of new experiences, <laughs> things I never thought I would do, but given the opportunity, what felt like a once in a lifetime opportunity, I took them because I like to try new things. So um, in honor of that, I did try maktuk. For those of you that don't know what that is, that is an extremely traditional meal or food. To eat here it's a deep part of their culture and it is uh whale blubber was extremely fatty as you would expect i just had a small piece um and my body was like what is this but um yeah it just felt right to accept and then there was yeah a series of games these different types of high kicking games we have Oh, nigga, look at this. The job, Chase. And uh, their drumming, drum dance, which was just amazing to watch. I can still hear their song, like, in my mind. <laughs> are from the states from southern canada feel free to come on up if you're from overseas come on up the woman follow the woman the men would follow the men with their motions <laughs> And then there was the blanket toss, which when I heard it was going to be happening today, I immediately had a flashback of being a kid and seeing it on TV. <laughs> this like ancient practice. Um, it's like where trampolines come from. But it took 45 men with this circle blanket that has handles, so 90 handles around it. And then they work together. It's a, it's a team building activity you, everyone has to balance each other out for it to be successful for it to be safe so everyone has to cooperate and be in balance with each other and and then yeah toss a woman up in the air it was really really neat to see so yeah it was just such such an amazing day I spent hours over at the ball field where this was all taking place and Talked to a few people and just had a really nice time. And then, yeah, I was starting to just feel a little overwhelmed from 
all the noise and being around a couple hundred people. So I came to spend some time with Frank and I took him to the beach. So he got to go swimming in the Arctic Ocean. And then I was just about to come inside and just like eat something and have a sleep for a while because I'm just not operating on a lot of sleep. And a woman and her husband were driving around to sell the donuts she had made today. She called them Eskimo donuts. So, I mean, that's what she told me. So, uh, <laughs> but um, her name was Cecilia and her husband Simon and they were so nice. And it was a bag of 10. I don't really need 10. So I gave one to the campers next door but then I I already ate one and I've eaten this before like growing up like my whole life I've eaten this um I never had friends that had but my mom makes this and my grandma made it and it's just gone back in my family we call them dough gods and they're shaped a little different um <laughs> it's a really nice thing to have and I'm super hungry there's they're not sweet at all um, they're just, they're just like fried dough and they're so good. So yeah, it's just, it's been really, just a really beautiful, emotional, uh, culturally immersive day that I could never have imagined because I didn't know these events were happening until like 24 hours ago and it just happened to align with the day I planned to spend here. Yeah, we'll just see what the rest of tonight and tomorrow brings after I get some food in me and have a little sleep. But now it feels really real that I've just driven all the way from Southern Arizona to the Arctic Ocean. And I'm so tired. So I'm going to stop rambling. And um, yeah, I'm just so grateful to be here and to have experience this and to feel so welcomed so many people have wave at me like locals wave at me and say hi and come ask where I'm from and it's just so amazing and it's such a shame that so many people do just come and take a photo with the sign and leave and it's cool to be really far north and it's cool to be at the Arctic Ocean, but what really makes this place special is the people. I love just simple fries like this. I There was a lot, so I wrapped some in a tortilla and fried it for later, but I seasoned it with salt, uh, ground ginger, coriander, uh, Trader Joe's, everything but the bagel seasoning as well as their citrusy garlic. Oh, it's really good. It's nice to get in out of the wind. I've been outside for a while. Frank was really enjoying just hanging out. It's pretty chilly. I got a fleece and a jacket still uh, but it's not as windy as it has been over the last couple days it's been a couple days since I've checked in with you um yeah I'm gonna eat and then I'm gonna update you properly because it has been all over the place <laughs> highs and lows but really great so yeah I'll catch up with you soon all right so I have eaten and slept for a few hours and um I'm having a morning beverage now 
It is 2 a.m. <laughs> it's 2 a.m. I got up from... I don't know if that was first or second sleep. I'm so confused. No. Uh, yeah, I just... Um, the sun doesn't go down. It doesn't even get dusk. It just goes around like that. It just gets lower and then... And, and it's... Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, it's been a couple days since I, I really checked in with you. I'm still here in Tuk Tuk Tuk. And um, yeah, after I last talked to you, really, I went to sleep and then I woke up with a horrible migraine and heartburn. And I had a pretty rough few hours that ended up with me vomiting before I could sleep. And then I slept for like almost 13 hours, which was awesome. But then I did have like a migraine hangover. All the next day which was just like a bad headache and just not feeling together the camping here had cleared out so I moved to uh, a spot I like more like up on the crest where I have a nicer view of the ocean I can see the pingos so and more grass for Frank so that was um, a good opportunity to snag but then uh, over at the kind of like picnic shelter there was some local women working uh, moose hide scraping moose hide so they were really friendly and welcoming and I got to just talk to them and, and ask questions and hear stories and observe what they were doing. And then I was invited to one of their houses while they were sewing up the holes, which was an opportunity I was so grateful for. I really like to just hear stories and be around people that live differently than me. Uh, people here live a lot differently than down south and in the cities. Um, it's kind of like this is the only place that exists exists in the whole world um, when you're here. So it's like the outside world just disappears. And um, yeah, people have just been so friendly and I've had some really nice interactions just walking across town. It's really nice, all the buildings are super colorful and there's no fences. It's just open, um, which is really nice to see. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's been really nice to hang out here and just taking it all in. So, um, I went back and hung out with my new friends again today and I've been hanging out here with Frank and, uh, just, yeah, enjoying me outside. It's cool, right? It's, it's cold. Uh, but the wind now has stopped while I was, um, while I was sleeping and all the fog rolled in. So... Yeah, it's it's just, uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful to be here. And um, I think there's supposed to be some sunshine, some sunshine and, and nice weather. So I'm going to stick around and hopefully get to, uh, <laughs> Frank is, really wants my attention. Look at this. <laughs> Hi. 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 Do you want to be the star of the show, Frank? Hi. Hello. Look at these cute little paws. What do you want here? You don't want that one? Do what, what do you want? You want this one? Oh, yeah. No? Do you want this one? <laughs> do you want this one? Oh, we have a winner. No? What do you want, buddy? What do you want? <laughs> yeah, you're on my sleep schedule now, aren't you? Do you want this antler? Oh. oh. You never want that. Good boy. I bought him that antler when I first uh, when I first brought Frank home. He asked for it, and then he chews on it like once every two years. Um, <laughs> today he wants it, so yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna work on editing. I have like five episodes filmed I need to work on. So yeah, I think I'm just gonna be spending the day here in camp tomorrow. So hopefully it'll clear up and I can show you what it's like when it's sunny here. Finally, that would be really nice.
All right, so after eight days here on the peninsula, it's time to go. It is time to begin our journey south. But first, I need to go to the post office and then I'm gonna park with a better view of the pingos so I can catch you up on the last few days that include a whale sighting very close to camp. It was really hard to leave, but um, it is time to move on. Uh, I have mail to get to in Dawson um, in a couple weeks before they return it. And um, yeah, but it was great. Uh, I saw a beluga whale. which was just so nice. It came so close to camp and I saw a few at a distance and I was hoping for more, but I didn't see them. They did come um, into the bay on the other side, but uh, because my sleep schedule is all over the place, I was sleeping when that happened. Yeah, we had a couple days of really nice, sunny, warm weather that was windy and I could be outside and, and enjoy the sun. And Frank and I both went swimming. Okay, well, it is the second sunny day here and if I don't take my opportunity to dip in the Arctic Ocean, I will regret it. So it is as warm as I think it's going to get. <laughs> It is kind of scary though because you can't see anything. I can't see what's below me. So I'm wearing sandals and walking very carefully. Oh my goodness. Oh. Okay. <laughs> it is not getting easier the longer I stand here. Oh my goodness. Okay. okay, it is, yeah, it's cold. It's not as cold as the glacier rivers though. So, <sighs> oh my goodness. I can do this. I can do this. Oh, this is the Arctic Ocean. I will go in. I will go in above my shoulders. Oh, I can do this. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Frank's looking at me like, what the heck? Yes. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's not bad. That's not bad. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, that's that's refreshing. That is that is very refreshing. Oh, I can say I've done that. <laughs> So I'm really glad I've continued to hang around. Uh, I've just been taking it really easy, writing some postcards, doing editing and stuff. And um, I think tonight, unless the wind really kicks up, uh, we'll have a, a fire through the night, all night.
It was nice just to be outside for like all of the midnight sun, although it was probably like 7 a.m. by the time I went to sleep. Uh, so the night, yeah, it's just <laughs> my sleep schedule is so messed up. But um, yeah, I want to experience the midnight sun. The lighting is the nicest from like like 1 a.m. to like 5 a.m. <laughs> So, yeah, that's when I like to be up. But, yeah, it was just great. Like, the Arctic Ocean is so neat. Like, I mean, it just, it looks like water. It looks like the same water as everywhere else. But then, like, the imaginations that come to the mind when you're sitting there and, you know, you realize, like, you can go, like, continue north and end up in Siberia in, like, less distance than for me to drive to, like, Washington State. So, yeah, it was just really neat, and it's just so big. Um, and, yeah, the highlight was definitely just talking to a bunch of locals. They're just some of the warmest, nicest people, and it feels like the rest of the world doesn't exist. Like, all that exists is tuck when you're there. And, you know, even though there's, like, internet, it just it just feels like its own little world and I really like that and that's when I go to places that have that feeling that's always like one of my favorite things about being in those places but uh, this has probably been a long video so <laughs> uh, we're on our way out I'm about 30k out of town I got wind um, that there was a polar bear sighted between 30 and 40k out of town which is incredibly rare for them to be this far inland. Uh, but I'm hungry, so I'm going to have some food. Maybe I'll see it, but it's unlikely. But it's also just neat knowing, like, right now, there's probably a polar bear within, like, 20 kilometers of me. Because, um, yeah, like, I just never thought I would be that close. But, yeah, I really appreciate you watching. And hope you've enjoyed seeing a bit of Tuck. And, um, yeah... Uh, it, it's um, it's cool to have visited and I'll be back someday I wanted to paddle to a pingo but it was just like really windy the whole time which was great because the mosquitoes and then today the wind died but I'm I'm tired I don't have energy so that shall remain on my bucket list is to paddle to a pingo but yeah I have lots of great adventures coming up uh, we still have to drive 900 almost 900 kilometers of dirt road to get back to pavement and then I'm gonna head over to Dawson City and yeah I'm gonna be up in the Yukon for you know another like three months uh, so uh, I'm gonna get up to lots of great things and um, yeah I'm gonna bring you along so if you're not subscribed please subscribe and hit the notification bell because I'm not on a schedule I just post when I feel like posting when I when I have the energy to edit an episode and get it up so um, yes. And huge thank you to patrons. If you would like to become a patron, there is a link below. You can become a patron for as low as about $250 US dollars a month, or you can sign up for an annual membership. It's like 30 bucks a year, and you just have that one charge, and then you have access to all sorts of exclusive content, um, lots of photos and stories in real time. Um, yeah. So anyways, thank you. Got a cute clip of Frank to send you off on your way, and we'll see you soon.